and good afternoon yes we are live welcome to my daily broadcast um, this is episode 452 and I seem to be running a theme about self stuff so today is self-esteem don't miss it until you don't have it or don't have it don't yeah something like that <laughs> Um, before I get to that and try and explain what I just said, I will introduce myself so you know who I am and what I'm about. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and I help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And every day I do these talks, usually, well, always on Facebook Live first, and then onto YouTube and onto a podcast after that, in case you're listening and watching in those two places. And the talks every day are called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And today is episode 452. I've done a few of these already. And today's about self-esteem. And I mentioned that I've done a few self ones. I did one of, I've did one. i done a few about self-love this last week because I've been recommending, if you haven't already got done so, to get my self-esteem, sorry, self-love, my self-love mirror meditation practice that I offered. And I'll mention that at the end of this as well. And yesterday I talked about... Um, <laughs> it'll come back to me in a second I remember what it was so there's two or three different self things I'm talking about so today's one is about self-esteem because it's so not talked about and what I'm realizing perhaps it's time we did talk about that because a lot of you out there may have some challenges without it and self-esteem is such a simple term and in a way it does include some other things but the reality is for most of us self-esteem is something that say this I'll get back to that. so hi Bonnie Th thank you thank you for thanking me for the wisdom that I'm sharing I love doing this it's a, it's a pleasure to have people respond so I'm grateful you, you're getting value from this um, so self-esteem let's talk about this I'm, I'm just gonna jump right in there have been self-esteem courses out there for, for decades for, for years forever it seems and for most people self-esteem is something they just don't think about and first of all before I get too far into this is far I get, before I get too far into this I want to explain what it isn't self-esteem is nothing to do with your ego although for a lot of people out there maybe you maybe somebody you know your ego is what you use to defend yourself or to control the environment or to feel better than other people but when you do that, you're putting yourself in a very precarious position because your ego doesn't have the depth and the power of the rest of you because it's only a small part of your mind. I might explain that more in a moment. But truly, self-esteem, and most of the skills I'm teaching and I've been teaching for a little while now, are really more heart-centered than ego-centered because the heart and the ego are two different, very, very different things. Your ego is very much a mental capacity and it's, an, it's your id in a way, it's your id, it's your, it's your well, it's your, of course it's your id, id stands for ID um, <laughs> but by being so caught up on your ego it's very easy frankly to get knocked around by life it may not be something you're, pre you're proud of it may not be something you talk about but I guarantee if you live by your ego alone you're gonna be licking your wounds a lot and self-esteem is a protection in a way it's a, it's a self-valuing that puts you in a place where your ego is not in charge and not the thing that makes or breaks your feelings of, of being okay. In other words, what self-esteem is, is a self-evaluation of being okay. Simplistic, simplistic way of putting it. And self-esteem is something that is really something that you have to give yourself. It doesn't come from outside. I can't give it to you. I can show you how to get there, but it's up to you to do it. And self-esteem as I keep repeating this topic, is a potent skill because the reality is life is going to keep throwing um, wrenches in the works. It's going to throw you curveballs. It's going to throw you off track, off center, out of alignment. And if you have self-esteem, I should say, if you have built up self-esteem and own yourself and respect yourself and have enough care and love about who you are, those slings and arrows of outrage, outrageous fortune, as they say, or I think Shakespeare said that, have no effect on you, have minimal effect on you. When you live from your ego, it's like living in a glass vase. It is? I guess it is. 
that when someone when someone <laughs> when someone like gets upset with you or throws a throws as I said throws a wrench in the works or or throws you a curveball, if you're living from an ego, you get knocked sideways and it's going to hurt like hell, and you may end up having to like hide out for a while to recover and lick your wounds. If your self esteem is intact, if your self esteem has been fueled up and restored, if someone throws you a curveball or life throws you a wrench throws a wrench in the works you actually find yourself in a way handling with ease because you're not going to be so invested the thing about the ego is is invested in being right for most people some people are wired weird and their ego is attached to being wrong that's a whole other conversation but for most people ego is an attachment to being or should I say one, one um, aspect of the ego is to be attached to being right because the ego's validation is being its own um, well, it's being validated as well. Like an ego being validated is what gives it power, it gives it authority, gives it like, see I'm right. And that gives ego its approval ratings. Sorry, just say Jermaine. Yep, ego, a person's sense of self-esteem, or at times, whoops, just lost that. Ah, there we go. A person's sense of self-esteem, or at times can be self-importance. Yes, and that's the thing. Self-esteem takes you out of the ego-driven format. Let's put it this way. Egotism, pluses and minuses. One plus, it gives you a sense of power. Minuses, you're very fragile. Self-esteem, <laughs> pluses and minuses. <laughs> minuses, it doesn't cost any. The minuses, it, it, there isn't really any. If you have self-esteem, you're actually being buoyed up. You're being lifted up and being encouraged by who you are. And it's that inner guidance system that keeps you in power. The, the, the pluses of ego self-esteem is when when shit hits the fan, to be blunt, you don't get, you don't get covered in it, or I should say you don't get affected by it, because self-esteem is a fuel, it's a resource, it's like a reservoir of comfort and confidence that allows you to move through events without taking things personally. For some people, their self-esteem is tied to their ego, which is a really challenging piece, because when they're out in the world and someone insults them, hurts their feelings, does something wrong, crosses them, lies to them, whatever those things are, their self-esteem or their sense of self gets diminished, get pushed down. And that's not really self-esteem, that's ego. When you really are living in a place of heartfelt self-love, self-support and self-esteem, which I talked about the last few days, then the world may throw you curveballs and wrenches and everything else, and you move forward. Sometimes I have to climb over a few things, but you do it with grace because you are trusting yourself. And this is the thing. When your self-esteem is strong, you trust who you are not what you're about. Ego is attached to what you're about. It's the, it's the plastic shell around the center, and the plastic shell can get cracked and shattered easily. But your core values, your core sense of being, it's your core self-love, and that self-esteem is within you. It's your wholeness, it's your truth. And when you really do practices and aspects and self-support um, Well, it's a practice already, but it's kind of the same thing. When you, when, you, when you really put your focus on yourself and love yourself and appreciate who you are, which is, which is why my self-love program is so powerful, sorry, self-love practice is so powerful, your self-esteem gets raised up to a point where you have this protection in a way of all the hazards of life because life isn't pretty at times. Life can be challenging. And so when you have self-esteem that is in your core beingness, it's about what you're, it's who you are about, then life doesn't affect you the way it otherwise will. So, so true, should be careful about with the ego times. Yes, Jermaine, absolutely. So, I'll say it again. Self-esteem is much more powerful than your ego. Self-esteem is more aligned with you than your ego. And self-esteem is much less fragile than your ego. So if you're given a choice, egotism, self-esteem, I think you know where I'm going to put my, put my investment, which is self-esteem. Because life is going to be crazy at times. And your ego is, I'll speak for myself, my ego has been backed around by several things over the last several months and years sometimes. And also when someone says nice things, my ego can get boosted. But I've got to watch that because the other thing, ego is very easily inflated, like a beach ball. And it's really not what I recommend as the most um, ideal way to go because when your ego is inflated, <laughs> it's like everything looks like a sharp object. <laughs> and you're going to get burst. So self-esteem, again, being internally fueled, internally sourced, is an absolutely more powerful way because it's not puncture. You can't puncture it if you're using that bad analogy I was just using. But the ego, when it's inflated like a beach ball, is extremely fragile 
and extremely um, <laughs> insecure, I'll put it that way. Because the thing is, if your ego gets inflated, it can get deflated as well. And when you have your ego be that um, swayable, ping-pongable as it were, you're going to be in this place where your life will not be a peaceful com um, or, or a comfortable place because it'll always be going up, down, like a yo-yo, up and down. And you won't be in control. Self-esteem is under your control because you fuel yourself and you fill yourself up. And that fuel is a powerhouse that will take you through anything. So when I said at the beginning, our self-esteem is such an overlooked or, un or under um, utilized idea, I'm giving you an inside clue that self-esteem really is, for some people, a game changer because it puts them back in their heart and puts them back in charge of who they are. If there's something you're dealing with, I highly recommend you find ways to refuel and rebuild your own self-esteem, to reconnect back into it and to really find your own way through so that you can, in fact, excuse me, rely upon that versus your ego. Because if you've been relying on ego for a long time, Tiffany, so tips on helping raising self-esteem. Hang on a second, I'll get to that. Because I was thinking about that too, so thank you. You're reading my mind. Um, let me finish the last piece. So if you're relying on ego alone, your life is going to be challenging. It's going to be hard because it's a really hard edge. In some ways, what it's like is self-esteem makes you more fluid and, self and ego makes you more rigid. And rigid doesn't work. Flow does. So um, I'll come back to that in a minute. So, so, so tips for helping raise self-esteem. Well, one thing I recommend highly, as I've talked about before, is my self-love mirror med meditation because self-esteem oftentimes is, is fueled by trusting and loving who you are. Self-esteem is a um, presencing. Presencing? Is that way of putting it? Being more present and being able to present yourself in a way that is pu fully putting yourself in the present. That was three presents. I hope that worked. And so but the way to do that is to fill up from inside. So self-esteem is a self, not inflicted, a self-fueled place of beingness. So tips about raising it. I think the, the best way, okay, here's, here we go. I was waiting for someone to drop in, it just did. So a few things. As I mentioned, self-love is a powerful way to raise your self-esteem. Self-forgiveness is another one to do because a lot of times we have to blame and judge for ourselves because of things that happened, which is where ego gets upset. But if you start forgiving yourself, you can raise your own self-esteem because it's compassion for yourself in the act of self-forgiveness that starts to bring back your um, self-esteem. Hi, Donna. Nice to see you in my broadcast. Um, some other things to help with self-esteem. Self-forgiveness, self-love. Um, here's another one. Keeping your agreements. I talked about this a, a few weeks ago, actually. One of the biggest things we forget about and one of the things that, make, things that makes or breaks our trust in ourselves and other people is agreement keeping. And so self-esteem for me is also raised and improved by having agreements with ourselves. So when you make agreements, and it's the key, make sure you know what they are. Because we've got a bad habit we have in people as people, we agree to things without realizing it and then we don't do them. And what's happening is we're chipping away at our own self-esteem because we're diminishing our own trust in ourselves. So make sure your agreements are clear. Don't make as many as you might otherwise do and be willing to renegotiate or say no to things. That's another powerful place. Because another thing that raises your self-esteem is not saying yes to everything. So there's another way you can raise your self-esteem. That's a few to get you started. Um, I mentioned again the self-love um, meditation, mirror meditation practice I've, I've got. I'll put the link in, in the comments afterwards. Um, but basically, just so you know what it is, it's my website, which is barryselby.com forward slash self-love, all one word. And self-love, and this, this practice, it's, it's two, audio, two audio meditations that I provide, plus a written guide as well. So it, you get bang for you get bangs for your buck, and it's good for men and women. Um, most women seem to like my voice, so the meditations work for them. Men, if you like them, you can have them too. So Tiffany, I hope that helped you with a few ideas to get you started. But self love definitely, keeping agreements because it builds self trust, and self forgiveness so that anything that may be inflicted in the past or judging in the past, you can make peace with it and love and love yourself back into into alignment again. Absolutely, you're welcome, Tiffany. And if you want help, reach out to me. I, I, I have a few. A few skills in my toolkit. <laughs> Arrows in my quiver, as it were. So self-esteem as a overarching topic, just to come back to that and to wrap this up, is really um, built on you trusting yourself, as I mentioned. So agreement keeping and self-forgiveness and self-love. Because when you can rely upon yourself and trust yourself from a really heartfelt place, your self-esteem raises because you are loving who you are and you appreciate who you are and you honor, uh, there's another part, another one, <laughs> self-honoring choices. When you're honoring yourself, 
because self-esteem is a lot of ways tied to remembering who, who you really are and honoring who you are is a powerful part of that. And honoring simply means that you respect who you are, what you're about, what you, as, again, why you keep your agreements. When you make agreements consciously, you're making honoring choices about yourself. So don't, so make choices, make your agreements clean, important, and clear so that you know when you're making them. So then when you keep them, you stay in, in harmony with yourself. So self-honoring is not a part of that. And maybe some more, hang on, I'm just, things are percolating, so I'm just seeing what comes through. Um, I'll just speak about self-confidence just a little bit because self-confidence is a big piece of the self-love work I do in the self-love process. It's not necessarily tied to self-esteem because sometimes confidence gets confu conf conflated, confused, conflicted with ego. So I'm using self-confidence purely as a reminder that self-esteem gives you that natural feeling of confidence, not a place of going like, you know, puffed up chest, like inflated going, I'm confident, that's ego. Self-confidence, when it's relying upon your true essence, yourself, again, self-esteem, is a quiet, trusting place where you trust yourself. And trust is a big part of this, as you may have guessed. I think that may, that may be it for now. I'm just, I'm just scanning if there's any more dropping in because I'm clearing out all the, <laughs> the buckets of information that are coming up to be shared with you. I've told you about the self-love piece, which is a piece I teach as well. Um, it, in, okay, let me, speak, let me speak about some of the benefits for a second. Since my work is primarily on helping you have an amazing relationship and attract an amazing relationship, Having strong self-esteem and trusting yourself means that you make very healthy choices in relationships, first of all. That's again, making clear choices and making clear agreements. You agree to choose at the standard you want to play at. Your self-esteem gives you a level to play at which is stronger than what you've done in the past. Thank you, Gina. Yes, it is, I, I appreciate things. I appreciate that you're getting the difference I'm explaining. <laughs> so choosing relationships from a place where you don't even go into a relationship unless you really feel like it's aligned to your values and your truth, that's a from place of self-esteem. There are many people who choose relationships out of a need to be um, not lonely, which is not actually the way to do it. I've had a whole I've concert, I've talked about that before on my most broadcast as well. When you have self-esteem, you don't need relationship. You choose a relationship because it adds to your exploration of life and you get to add to it as well. And self-esteem, like so many other pieces of the self-centered work that I talk about, really puts you in a place where a relationship becomes additive to your life and is not feeling something you think you're missing because you are not missing anything. Um, absolutely, Gina. Yes, and leaving a relationship that is no longer feels an alignment. Yes. When your self-esteem is strong because you don't settle and you don't choose out of need, you choose because you desire. And you come from a clean place. But on, yes. And so, yes, not, it's not easy, but it does honor and develop self-esteem. Yes, absolutely agree with you on that one. Because some of you folks out there are in, a bit, are in a relationship still which don't serve you, don't honor you, don't respect you. And that's the thing you have to be clear about choosing whether you want to stay there or not, or in fact leave. That's another part of the work that I've done with, with my clients and I understand. And Jeannie, I know your story, so yes, I, I get that. Um, and you're right on track with that. So self-esteem puts you in place to choose relationships from a much higher place that's more heart aligned, more trusting, more honorable. Because if you've been in relationships that don't honor you, your self-esteem has not been um, at the front of your choice making ability. And self-esteem may be where you want to spend your time and focus with again, self-love, self-confidence, self-trust and self-approval and self-forgiveness and self, the other one. <laughs> we'll put you in a place where choosing a relationship becomes easier because you now, long, you now choose from a very clear place that you won't settle for less than you deserve. And nobody, nobody should settle for less than they deserve in a relationship or in any part of life. So. That's why I do these talks. I'm passionate about sharing this and inspiring you about this. I hope this gives you some insights, some inspiration, some ideas. I think that may be it. I'm, I was watching for something else to drop in and it didn't. So usually these, these talks go about 15, 10, 15 minutes, but I guess I must have just gone about that time. So I think I'm, I'm about to raise wrap this up. Um, if you have any questions, comments, and, and again, thank you for interacting with the video. And if you want to, if you think somebody, somebody else, let me try that one again. I was rushing too fast for my teeth to catch up. Thank you for watching. Thanks for the input. Thanks for the and sharing with me. If you feel there's anybody else you'll watch this, please share it with them. If you have any questions or comments after I finish, I'll respond in the comments afterwards. If you're watching this on YouTube, it's because I share it on there afterwards. My channel on YouTube is Barry Selby, and the playlist is Messages from the Masculine. If you're listening to this on iTunes, it's because my podcast called Messages from the Masculine is where these end up as well. 
Um, if you're looking for love in all the wrong places, you want help in that, please reach out to me. Go to barryselby.com forward slash chat and sign up for a discovery session. And again, you can get my self-love meditation practice with audio tracks and written guide at barryselby.com forward slash self-love. I'll put the comments, I'll put those links in the comments below as well. Um, homework. If anything of this, if any part of the stuff I, if anything I talked about in this talk speaks to you and it gives you a nudge, that's your homework. Take that nudge in and deal with it. There you go. And if you want to reach out for help, you know where to find me. With that, I thank you for joining me. Thanks always for participating and for following me along in my talks. This is my 5 p.m. Pacific time talk every day, um, unless I announce otherwise. So I'll be back again tomorrow, same time, same channel. I'll see you again tomorrow, so take care of yourselves and uh, have a great evening. Bye.